Hello, welcome back to Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, what's the most common bourbon in the world? Most common bourbon in the world. Maybe distillery. I would, I would probably go Jim Beam on that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so we both are fans of Bottle and Bond. And yeah. I think if you combine the biggest distillery in the world and Bottle and Bond, I think we're in for a treat. We, I, well, I hope so. Bam. This is Jim Beam bonded. Uh, well, like you just said, we're both fans of the, the 100 proof point. Yep. Also tend to be fans of Beam products at 100 proof. Knob Creek. Yep. Old Granddad bonded, uh, old tub. So this one is, uh, I think I paid 29 bucks for a liter, so it's a budget friendly sure. one. But it really is not terribly common in our area. I think I've seen this at like two liquor stores. Now the, the one liquor store that I got this from has it consistently. Okay. But it just doesn't seem to be a very popular bottle that a lot of stores carry. But it can't be, it's not like hard to find, they just choose not to carry it. I think, I yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, they carry like the Devil's Cut and Jim yeah. Beam Black and Double yeah. Oak. But for some reason, pretty much never this one. So we're going to get into this. And I'm pretty excited about this because like, you know, like we just said, we're, we're tend to be fans we, of recently the... recently uh, had a bunch of the Beam products and been very happy with them. Yeah. And the 100 Proof Point is always a good spot, I think. It sounded like I was pouring much more of that than I actually was. The little faux tax strip is falling apart here. <laughs> you don't think it's real? You don't think they're Yeah, I don't think they have to do those anymore. <laughs> do you think it's actually guarded in a government warehouse? I mean, it's it has to legally be. My, my guess is all warehouse. I was thinking about this the other day. I think all, my guess is all bourbon warehouses are inspected for some level. Probably. And I don't think they have to have a special warehouse anymore. I mean... I think we get. It, I mean, it's a government bonded warehouse, but what does that actually mean? It, exactly. My guess is maybe all the rick houses are government bonded, or potentially government bonded. Well, or and something. bottled and bonded initially started out as a quality control yeah, measure to keep people every from adding quality. stuff, and so now being quality control, you know, being in this day and age, quality yeah. control is obviously a thing anyway. Well, so I really do it, wonder if it, you, I would disagree with you. <laughs> it is a thing. They just do a really good job of it. Right. But I wonder if actually releasing this just at a hundred proof in at least four years. I mean, you really have to do the whole bottled and bond thing. Does it matter right, if it was in a government bonded warehouse? Yeah. You know? Anyway. Yep. That's bourbon theory. Yeah. It smells really good though. Yeah. That first uh, nose of it, I didn't really get anything and now it's just opened way up. I actually get coffee grounds. Really? That's not a common... It, it's not super common. But it's more like wet coffee grounds, like the earthiness of it. Not not the actual coffee flavor so much, but it's interesting. I'm getting a light caramel, some brown sugar, and like a, there's a spice, but it's not necessarily a cinnamon spice. It's almost like a... An aggressive nutmeg. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a... It's almost like a fall spice, sort of. I don't really know what... I'm going for it. Yeah, let's let's do it. You know, this year for Halloween, you should dress up as an aggressive nutmeg. I don't even know what that would entail. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's different than I was expecting. That's a much, much easier, like that's a really non-aggressive bourbon. I mean, I'm trying to avoid saying smooth, <laughs> is what I'm doing. Here. It's very, like, it's a caramel drink. Like, Kinda. it's caramel, it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a caramel, Liqueur almost. It's very, very good. Sweet, but not not too sweet. But nice, smooth caramel, brown sugar notes. I feel like the alcohol proof is just. I wouldn't guess this is 100 proof. You're right. I, after a couple of sips now. It's missing a little bit of that bite that I like. Mm -hmm. But it has a, a bite to it in the sense that it's got a nice kind of spice to it. There's a black pepper note at the end, which is nice, but it is really light. Like, you're right. At I'm, this point, I would guess it's an 80 proofer. It's 
Yeah, I, but, I, I would maybe say 86 or 90. But it's not like it's watered down and missing something because there's a lot of flavor. Yeah, it's just, it's not just the alcohol proof. This is very different than I was expecting. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, as far as how, I don't know how many mash bills Jim Beam has, but they've got the high rye, they've got the regular stuff. And being that, you know, the old granddad bonded is the high rye. Not sure what the mash bill is on the old tub, but I kind of feel like this is very different than... It is different than I expected. And I guess I was just thinking, we've had recently the Jim Beam single barrel, but that's that's a lot higher proof. Now the single barrel is like 95. Well, no, okay, yeah, it's, it's higher proof. We got it. I just don't think it's like it though. We gotta I mean, do a little side by side here. Spoiler alert, I like Old Tub. Yes, both fans of Old Tub here. So, and I'm not doing water between these because I just want to get the sharp contrast here. Doing small pour of the Old Tub. Those smell much more uh, similar than I thought they were. Like just so, drinking this before having this, you know, before smelling this. So Old Tub typically, I haven't smelled it yet, is very cinnamon forward. Yep, cinnamon, corn, cornbread. Yeah, this isn't as different as I thought it was going to be. Because when I first sipped this one, I was like, well, that's way different than Old Tub and Old Granddad. I'm getting more spice on this one for sure. And... Even more alcohol spice, more... Yeah, definitely more spice. So these have to be different mash bills if the age is the same. I guess there's other things we can do, but sure feels like there's slightly different bourbons. This is a higher rye mash bill, would be my guess. Possibly. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but you don't get like rye spice off of this at all. That's the thing. You get that cinnamon spice. Cinnamon. And it's got that um, a little bit of pepper to it, but it doesn't have... At least to me, the, those kind of quintessential rye notes. Now, I could just not be getting that. Could just be that this bourbon doesn't really showcase those as much as other ones do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel this one definitely has an edge on it. The well, old tub. So I think it has more of like an initial. I'm going to do a slightly bigger pour. I ran out. The old tub has a like a quicker flavor that hits you, mm -hmm. which I really like. Um, this one is much more, I don't want to say smooth, more mellow, but it's really, really good. I agree 100%. Oh, you're stirring in the bottle. Yeah, it looks like there's a, you know, floater or whatever. <laughs> it looks weird from this angle. Oh. Um, yeah, this, this is definitely really mellowed down. I think I like the old tub better just because it has a little extra edge to it that has that carries a little more flavor with it. I'm mostly surprised at how different they are. Like, yeah. I, I would expect them to be, I mean, because we've had old granddad bonded mm -hmm. um, and that's also different. And we did a side by side comparison with the old tub. Yep. Um, this one's really good. It's just, it's surprising to me. So I'm gonna have to pick up a bottle and like take my time, think through what I think it's like. I feel like it's just missing a little something at the 100 proof point. It's not punching as far as like alcohol proof. Yeah. Um, it's it's different than a lot of, bond, well, all bonded, um, because the alcohol note is, is really missing. Yeah. But, it's, but I feel it's replaced with flavor um, and I really like the flavors. Yeah, it definitely has good flavor. It just feel like there's just a little something like it's it's turned up to nine. You know? <laughs> nine point two. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, not bad. And for for twenty nine dollars for a liter, that's not bad. Now there's other budget stuff out there that I maybe would put ahead of this for a similar price point, but mm -hmm. nothing wrong with this at all. Especially if you want a little bit more uh, easy drinker. Easy drinker, but a higher proof. I guess the only reason you would want that is if you're looking to get hammered, but you don't want to. <laughs> An aggressive tasting whiskey, well, I guess. Well, I mean, I know. if you want the higher proof, it's because you want the higher flavors. And yeah, I, I don't know. I'm curious what other people think because I feel this one is a little bit more alcohol forward and stronger spice. Yep. This one is more flavor forward, 
and the alcohol is kind of hidden. And I think there are there is a bourbon drinker profile out there where this is a better choice for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it could be. I mean, Old Tub's not for everyone. I don't understand why not, because I think it's delicious. Well, some people don't like cinnamon. Yeah. I don't understand those people, but I have heard they exist. Hmm. But the third and fourth sip kind of like... Yeah, that's I, I can't get over how smooth that is <laughs> for 100 proof. It just really is. So yeah, if you want something that packs a little bit more alcohol proof, but not so much alcohol in the flavor and not so much of an alcohol burn. This is a great, just maybe the best one I've, I've had for that, if that's what you're yep, looking for. I agree. Yep. You know? Or maybe, you know, you want to you wanna higher proof because you're going to sit down and have one drink. You want to get a little mileage out of that one drink and, you know, mellow out for the night just a little bit. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, this would be a great one for that. So, all right. Well, this has been Jim Beam Bonded on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. With a special appearance by the Old Tub. Special appearance by Old Tub. I'm Greg. Thanks for watching. Cheers.